Hello everybody, uh, so we're going to continue where we left off from the last tutorial. So in the last tutorial we kind of set up our draw commands, we set up our update, um, our load content, etc, etc. So uh, we got a few stuff set up. So what we want to do now is we want to create another class. And this class, depending on what animation you want to do, you don't necessarily have to copy my animation, but I would suggest uh, doing what I'm doing now to get a grasp of what I'm trying to, to do and then you can modify it later. Uh, so uh, we're going to call this fade animation and the base class is going to be uh, animation. So in order to do that we got to include animation, the animation class. Okay so we got that included and everything is set. So uh, for functions, we gotta have load content, load content, and let's go to right here. Just gotta copy this. Uh, we have unload content. We have update, and we don't have anything for. It. Well, we have. We're gonna have a draw command, but uh. We're just going to take that from. We're going to take that from the animation class. Okay, so we're going to say uh, void fade animation uh, load content. Okay, uh, so right as we do that, we're going to call the load content from the animation class and just fill in everything else from there. So our image and our text image and position. Okay, uh, so we got that set up. So now the reason why we got it this way is that because every animation, um, every single different animation might have some other properties or something that um, is not required by some uh, some other class. So now we're gonna we're gonna create uh, some a boolean variable called increase, and uh, for now we're just going to leave it at that. So we're gonna set increase equal to false. Uh, so for the unload content, we don't really have anything to put in there for now. Uh, if I miss something, then let me know in the comments below. But I don't think I I miss anything. So we'll leave that blank and. For the update, uh, what we gotta do, what we missed in the last tutorials, we gotta make a boolean variable called active, and we gotta set it to to false by default. So, in fit animation .cpp, we set active equals to false. So if we go to our fade animation .cpp now. Uh, now this is where our our magic is gonna happen. So we're gonna say if active. So if it's true, then we do something. If it's not active. Uh, then we don't do anything or right, so we're going to reset our values so we're going to reset alpha equal to 1.0 f okay so uh what we got to do what we're going to do now is in our animation class uh for for right now what we're going to do is we're going to make a virtual uh virtual void set function so we're going to say set alpha and we might not uh need this I'm just cuz I needed this for my X and A and, and level 5 um, I believe but uh, we'll, we'll see what, if we need it so right now in our fade animation .cpp, we're gonna say uh, uh, if not increase then alpha um, plus equals and we'll say fade speed uh, no should be subtract equals and we have else alpha plus equals fade speed. So as you guessed, we need to create a fade speed um, variable. And we'll make this float value fade speed. And uh, by default, we set fade speed equals to uh, I guess 0 0.001. Um, this might change after, uh, especially uh, if we're gonna incorporate timers and stuff like that, um, which we really should, uh, then this is this is definitely gonna change. Uh, so speaking of timers, what we should do in our screen manager class is we should have a public function, 
I should say get uh, frame time and uh, in the screen manager dot cpp uh, do I have it open nope okay so at uh, the bottom I guess we have screen manager uh, get frame time or oh, should uh, uh or actually we don't even need to do that uh I just delete this so in our animation class what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, for our update we're gonna add in the render window as well uh, simply because we want to be able to get the frame time so if we want to do everything at an equal um, time step like you want to do everything uniformly then uh, we, we should have this there so uh, for animation right here we'll say render window and window okay so we could say plus equals uh, minus equals window dot get frame time times fade speed I believe that's the function name and window I get frame time times fade speed so therefore we're gonna have to increase the fade speed now uh, let me increase that to 100 okay and in the fade animation dot H we gotta add in the render window okay uh, so we got that set up and um, we're gonna say that if alpha is greater than or equal to um, 1.0 F then we're gonna say alpha is equal to 0 no sorry alpha alpha is equal to 1.0 F and increase is equal to false and we have an else if alpha is less than or equal to 0, 0.0 F then alpha is equal to 0, 0.0 f and increase is equal to true okay so right now what's going to go on is it's going to increase the alpha value um uh, if it reaches the peak alpha value then it will start decreasing and if it reaches the, the the minimal alpha value then it will increase it again so that's all our update uh that's all our update does and um and yeah and what we what we should do is um i guess we'll make this virtual just in case you need to modify the draw command any um at any point might as well uh, but we just make this virtual and since we already inherited that uh for the draw command we'll just say fade animation draw uh And we'll just call, we'll just make a call to animation draw. Okay, so we got, um, for the most part, we've got um, the fade animation stuff down packed, uh, sort of, I believe. So what we got to do is that we got to be able to apply this alpha and, and such to our images and our text. Now, uh, the thing is... What I think I made a problem with is that um, with the 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 things that the, with the alpha values um, with um, SFML it goes from zero to two fifty five, which is with a lot of um, other APIs. But uh, I believe we can make a workaround with this as well. It really depends on which format you want to use. For example, if I open up my calculator right now. Okay, so if we want, we can make the alpha range from 0 to 255 um, if we want it to, right? And we can do that. It, it really depends on the format. But if we want, we can keep our format going from 0 to 1. But what we'd have to do is um, multiply our alpha by the, the maximum number, which is 255. So for example, if our alpha is equal to 1, which it's showing the full image, then 255 times 1 equals 255, right? And if we were to do 255 times 0, uh, then that would give us a value 0. 
So say for example the alpha is equal to 0 0.5, we could say times 0 0.5, and that would give us 127.5, which is half of it. So it it kind of it, it varies on which w method you want to use. It doesn't really matter which method you want to use mathematically or anything. Um, that is up to you. No, but I'm gonna end that tutorial. I'm gonna end this tutorial here to not make it overly too long, and we'll continue where we left off in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and bye.